Okay, some basics here, what I, I call universal testing methods. This is all chapter one stuff that I teach in my classes, which is back pressure testing and uh, checking for hydrocarbons in, an, in a cooling system, those, those types of things. That's what we're doing right now. On this model year truck, they use what's called a DPFE sensor for the EGR valve. So it's a back pressure um, transducer that measures flow rate of the EGR. And if you look at the pipe, if you look at the metal pipes for this, they both go into a tube and that tube runs down that way into the exhaust down there on this side mm -hmm. or, or centered in a cylinder head. I forget where that exactly bolts up. It actually is important because this test could be affected by where we get that sample port uh, based on the cat's location. I can't remember. Uh, we're just gonna do this test. I'm not pulling O2s um, to get too detailed with this. I'm gonna suggest a video for you guys to watch where we did have a single cat that was plugged. And uh, you can miss it here, unless it's the main cat in the back. So it's two cats up front, and I think one cat in the back. Let me look. No downstream cat, only two upstreams. These cats are new. And this test on this model, it's only valid for the driver's side because this tube runs to the to I'm sorry, passenger side. This tube for the EGR grabs its sample from this exhaust manifold. You're not gonna see it from here, but that's where that tube's going. So let's talk about theory for a second. There's only two cats. There isn't one downstream. So this test is only gonna be good for passenger side upstream cat and then the main one where we go two into one. That one's either missing or just hasn't been, uh, wasn't part of this model. So <clears throat> this is only gonna check the passenger side for a restriction. For the imbalance we have, we have uh, minus 15 on this side and positive 11, positive nine we saw on this side, right? When you have one restricted cat, the theory would be that most of the airflow that's being measured by the mass airflow sensor, which is down here, it's in part, it's in the air filter housing. You don't have to zoom in. It's down here. So with a restricted exhaust, um, it would have to be pretty severely restricted too, by the way, where, where it would be affecting even idle speed. The airflow, most of it is going to go on the side that's not restricted. Let's say hypothetically, we have a restriction on the passenger side. Most of the airflow goes on the driver's side. However, this is meant to be a calculation of all of the cylinders. So this side ends up being too much airflow as far as the calculations go. And this side with the restricted cat, hypothetically, would be not enough airflow. The injection pulse would be based off of all of the airflow. And so this side getting too much air would be lean. So we'd have positive numbers on this side. And this side with the restricted cat, because we're not moving that air into that side, we're still injecting a injection pulse that's based off airflow here. This side would then run rich and we'd have negative numbers. So given that scenario, the only side I really care about with what we're talking about is this side. So I do wanna do this back pressure test. And if you guys want, I have a lecture with my class where we go through this on an F-150 or an Explorer, we actually drilled holes in the exhaust to get actual measurements on where the restriction was. And I go through all of this with my class with a live vehicle. It was a really, really good lesson for everyone involved. I'll put a link here for you guys to watch that. All right, I do need to do this test. So I want this tube off, crossing my fingers I don't break it. I wanna stay away from the plastic if I can. I just need this one, really. Sweet. That is all I need. And for what we're talking about, for back pressure testing, I really only want or care about idle speed because we're seeing it at idle. Let me start it. With these cats being new, I didn't anticipate seeing anything at all. This is disconnected. This is connected. There's no restriction there. Now, when you do a back pressure test, um, you really want to raise the RPM 
in our case, it doesn't matter because our issue is at idle. And the spec that I've used forever is no more than two PSI, which is this lower gauge number at 3000 RPM. You saw that was hovering around zero the whole time. I'll put some links in here for you guys on restricted exhaust and what they look like using this same test. There's nothing wrong with that cat. I do realize we're not checking that side, but given the scenario we're talking about with this side running rich, that'd be the side I'm looking for the cat to be restricted on if my memory serves me correct in that procedure or in that variable. I've only seen it once. All right, next hydrocarbon test. So a couple things at this point, this will be where you're talking to your customer. Like, are you using coolant? Are, are you losing coolant? Are you adding coolant? Is it overheating? Those kind of things. Um, overflow bottle, this is a, a pressurized one. Um, this is the one we're going out of. We want to be real careful that we don't suck in any coolant. I'll let you guys hear the flow of this. Take a listen. Okay, and we're gonna watch. I'm gonna, I'm gonna put this here, cover it with my hand, and then we're gonna watch these numbers. In particular, that one right there, my CO. Are you ready? Yes. All right. Gotta be careful, it's pressurized. Covering that up. Watch your hydrocarbons. Usually about a 15 second delay. It's, I think it's faster than that. No hydrocarbons. Zero. Now I always check my machine, watch the CO2, ready? I'm just breathing in it. Here, watch the hydrocarbon. Uh, <laughs> There's your hydrocarbons. <laughs> There's your bad head gasket. <laughs> head gasket, nope. So this is where we are right now. This is either gonna be a mechanical issue, like a valve problem, or it's gonna be an injector issue. It's one of the two. And balance test is up, so I think I wanna be inside for this part, because I need the stand and my laptop, my Pico, and get everything hooked up. Let's, let's power, we'll power down, I'll get everything hook up, hooked up, I'll tell you how I did it, and then we'll cross our fingers that we can see something if I don't, we're probably going to end up then pausing here and getting my timer tool and coming back and then redoing the test with my timer tool. Um, that's what I'm thinking. I'm actually really glad at this point because I'm, I'm really struggling to pinpoint this one. Uh, I, I, I'm really glad that we did the Swaptronics with the O2s because now I would be circling back to that. I'm really also glad we checked hydrocarbons. I'm glad we checked restricted exhaust because now in my mind, after doing this, I wanna circle back to these things, but guess what? We've checked them off of our list. I'm confident in those checks that we did. So I'm happy about the Swaptronics now. Um, I'm happy that we did the other tests. I said we were gonna do this first and then I was like, I thought about it and I'm like, I was worried that we were gonna be here which is like, ah, oh, man, that's nuts. I thought it was clear at first, and then as, as things changed as it, as it ran, and I'm like, man, I'm not so sure, you know? I'm not so sure anymore. But this is the way troubleshooting is. Uh, if this ends up not being fruitful when we do our balance test, then the next thing from there is gonna be engine mechanical type stuff, like uh, compression testing, running compression, those kind of things.